Republican Congressman Steve King was the Donald Trump of anti-immigrant bigotry and white supremacy long before Donald Trump became a politician. Steve King has been condemned over and over again by Democrats in Washington and around the country. And today, finally, finally, Steve King has been condemned by the Republicans. At the same time that a new poll reveals that Steve King might be on the verge of losing the congressional seat that he was reelected to two years ago with a 23-point winning margin, Republican Congressman Steve King, who has been assigned, not, not Steve King, who Stivers, uh, Republican Congressman Stivers, who's been assigned the job by Paul Ryan of helping to reelect the Republican Congress, finally condemned something that Congressman King said. Congressman Stivers, who is the chairman of the Republican Congressional Campaign Committee, said this. Congressman Steve King's recent comments, actions, and retweets are completely inappropriate. We must stand up against white supremacy and hate in all forms, and I strongly condemn this behavior. Now, here is what did it. After a trip to Austria, Steve King said, that Austria's Freedom Party, which was founded by a Nazi and is the 21st century edition of the Nazi Party, Steve King said this about them. He said, if they were in America pushing the platform that they push, they would be Republicans. And of course, the biggest problem for Republicans with what Steve King said there is that it is true. In the two-party system here in the United States, if an Austrian Nazi has to choose one, there is no question that that choice would be the Trump party. The Republican Congressional Campaign Committee might feel free to condemn Steve King now because they might believe that he is on his way to losing anyway. A new poll shows him in a statistical tie with his Democratic challenger, J.D. Shulton, and that is in a district, as I said, where Steve King won by 23 points just two years ago. Joining our discussion now, Democratic Congressman Eric Swalwell, a member of the House Intelligence and Judiciary Committees. Congressman Swalwell is a native of Iowa. He now represents the California District. He's done extensive work campaigning on behalf of King's opponent, J.D. Shulton. And David Jolly is with us, a former Republican Congressman from Florida. Congressman Swalwell, uh, the Republicans finally have decided uh, that Steve King is hurting them, and they have to say so. I, I welcome that, uh, and good evening, Lawrence. It shows that they have a red line. You know, for the last year and a half, uh, many of us have been wondering, what's the red line? When will the Republicans speak up and say, this is not what we stand for? Uh, so now the question, I guess, is, will they also condemn the person who talks just like Steve King? And that's the President of the United States, Donald Trump. I know that district well. I was born in that district. My dad was the chief of police in Algona, Iowa. My parents are Republicans, and we grew up around a lot of Republicans. And Republicans in that district don't believe in what Steve King is espousing. I've had the privilege of riding around that district with J.D. Shulton and his Sioux City Sioux campaign RV. And what people in that district are talking about is health care. And Lawrence, so many times we'd go to a Casey's General store and you'd see a collection jar at the store for people pooling money together for somebody who has a health care condition or suffered a medical uh, accident. And that's what's top of mind there, not these culture wars that Steve King is, is peddling. Uh, David Jolly, uh, would the Republican uh, camp Congressional Campaign Committee be giving up on Steve King, uh, condemning him if he were 10 points ahead in the polls? Well, either way, I think you're seeing them distance themselves from Steve King. And it may not be a written rule in politics, but if you're having to condemn white supremacy, you're losing the debate. And we know that. Look, the, the reality is this is a member of Congress who has suggested that civilization needed to be restored, and it couldn't be restored with other culture's babies. Those are, those are his words. But to Eric's point, and this is very important, listen, this is a narrative that now has been embraced and accepted within a Republican Party where, look, there are good people within the Republican Party, but we are looking for good leaders. And we don't find them in Steve King and Donald Trump. Frankly, in the state of Florida, where you have a gubernatorial candidate who is entangled in the similar type of narrative. And at the end of the day, Lawrence, what happens is this pivots to looking at the failings, often, of Republican policies. And we know that Republican policies have left 
certain communities behind, particularly communities of color. And that's where the narrative comes full circle. Because when you have voices like Steve King, you can't defend the failings of conservative economic policies that have left others behind. And that is where we are missing voices within the Republican Party today. Curtis as well, well, it seems that the, the King district could be a real bellwether nationally for the Democrats and for the Republicans. If Steve King is down 22 points from his last uh, election, which he is now in the polls, that, that's a stunning drop, uh, making this a tie, making this uh, competitive. Uh, if he were to lose that or if he were even to win it uh, at the current polling margin by one or two percentage points, uh, that would indicate uh, other just wipeouts for Republicans in other districts where they don't have such a big margin going in. Uh, that would be a big night for Democrats. Uh, Lawrence, that would mean that we would have gone four for four in Iowa. There are two seats in Iowa where we have Cindy Axney and Abby Finkenauer as our candidates that are much more competitive. So the fact that this is even close, I don't think bodes very well for the other two seats uh, for Republicans. But going back to what David said, you know, Republicans uh, in that district, they would much rather prefer uh, Steve King to be talking about these uh, economic issues. But uh, I think J.D.'s success is going to be that he has knocked on Republican doors. He's listened to Republican voters. His phone bankers are calling a Republican households, and they're just talking about the kitchen table issues while Steve King is off in Europe supporting white supremacist uh, groups. And meanwhile, David, uh, the national debt uh, reaching stratospheric, stratospheric heights now. Uh, the United States Treasury about to borrow the largest amount it has ever borrowed in its history. Uh, and Donald Trump and the Republican Party that Steve King is supposed to be part of promised to take to reduce that debt, not increase it. Lawrence, in a period of economic growth, right, the, peri the president every day talks about economic growth. The last time we saw trillion-dollar deficits was in a recession that was inherited by Barack Obama. Now Republicans have invited and passed policies that actually expand this deficit. And to Eric's point, look, we're going to find out one week from today whether the American people accept that type of fiscal policy or not. I think we're going to know very early on the East Coast. If you look at Carlos Cabello, Barbara Comstock, if you look at Andy Barr in Kentucky, New Jersey, Pennsylvania. We're going to know whether it's a blue wave or not. And I think all signs are pointing there tonight. And we will be watching Steve King's district in Iowa. David Jolly, right. thank you for joining us tonight. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.